Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. India puts military and diversity on display in Grand Republic Day Parade. Pakistan's ex-PM Imran Khan fires fresh salvo at government after arrest of key aid. And UN aid chief says 6 million Afghans knocking on famine's door this winter. And now for all the details, India showcased its military and its cultural diversity in a colourful parade on Thursday at the revamped Colonial Avenue in New Delhi to mark Republic Day, the anniversary of the day the country's secular constitution came into effect in 1950. Egyptian President Abdul Fateh al-Sisi was the chief guest for the event and 144 soldiers from the Arab nation's armed forces also participated in the parade. India on Thursday marked its 74th Republic Day with a military parade and display of cultural diversity. As Prime Minister Narendra Modi and President Draupadi Murmu led the celebrations, while Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi attended as the chief guest. The parade displayed the country's military prowess, tradition and culture at Kartavyapath, an elegant lawn-bordered boulevard dating from the British colonial era that connects the presidential palace to the India Gate War Memorial. Accompanied by marching bands, troops from India's military, border and police forces, paced in perfect synchronization. 144 soldiers from Egypt's armed forces also participated. The only serving active host cavalry regiment in the world, 61 cavalry, MBT Arjun tank of the Indian Army, Akash weapon, Nag and the Brahmos missile systems and the K-9 Vajra T were some of the many weaponry displayed during the parade, apart from other defence detachments. Several thousand people watched the parade from seats around Kartavipath or Path of Duty, braving the cold on a foggy morning in New Delhi, while the event was televised to millions more at home. One of the main attractions of the annual parade was its fly-past, with aircraft of the Indian Air Force showcasing aerobatic skills. As part of the celebrations, beating retreat ceremony was also observed at the Atari Vaga border, the road checkpoint between India and Pakistan in northern Punjab state. India won independence from British rule on August 15, 1947, but it was not until January 26, 1950 that the nation declared itself a sovereign republic state with the adoption of its constitution. The drill at the border signifies the rivalry as well as cooperation between India and Pakistan. The ceremony is not only a daily drill performed by the border security force and the Pakistan Rangers, but it has also emerged as a major tourist attraction on both sides of the Red Cliff Line. India's Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia and Science and Technology Minister Jitendra Singh on Thursday launched the country's first intranasal COVID-19 vaccine in COVAC. The vaccine, developed by the Bharat Biotech Company, has been approved for emergency use in the age group of 18 and above. India's Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia and Science and Technology Minister Jitendra Singh on Thursday launched the country's first intranasal COVID-19 vaccine. In Kovac, the vaccine developed by the Bharat Biotech Company has been approved for emergency use in the age group of 18 and above. It has received approval for a primary two-dose schedule and as a heterologist booster dose. Unlike Covaxin, also produced by Bharat Biotech, which was an inactivated SARS-CoV-2 virus, the nasal vaccine contains only a part of it, namely the spike protein, and is wrapped in a virus that is typically harmless to people. हिंदुस्तान में नहीं केवल लेकिन विश्व में मैं मानता हूं कि फर्स्ट वैक्सीन है उसका उपयोग हिंदुस्तान में भी हो और दुनिया में भी हो अल्टीमेटली हमारा लक्ष्य है देश और विश्व स्वस्थ रहे विश्व स्वस्थ रहने में भी हिंदुस्तान की भूमिका हमेशा महत्वपूर्ण रही है क्योंकि कभी हमने हेल्थ को केवल कॉमर्स के साथ नहीं देखा है 
हमने हेल्थ को सेवा के साथ देखा है On Thursday, India saw a single-day rise of 132 new coronavirus infections, while active cases declined to 1906. The number of infections has fallen sharply in the country in the past few months. The South Asian nation of nearly 1.4 billion people has administered more than 2.2 billion anti-COVID vaccine doses so far. And in a fresh round of criticism, Pakistan's opposition PTI party chief Imran Khan criticized the state institutions after his party's senior leader Fawad Chaudhry was arrested in a sedition case. Khan said that the nation is looking to the Supreme Court and the Chief Justice of Pakistan for justice, which is a far-fetched idea after the Pakistan Democratic Movement took over the reins. In a fresh round of criticism, Pakistan's opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan on Wednesday slammed the incumbent government and state institutions after his party's senior leader Fawad Chaudhry was arrested in a sedition case. Fawad was arrested from his residence on Wednesday over charges that he publicly threatened the members of the Election Commission of Pakistan. During a televised press conference, Khan said that the nation is looking to the Supreme Court and Chief Justice of Pakistan for justice, which is a far-fetched idea after the Pakistan Democratic Movement took over the reins. Speaking on the state of the country's political scenario, Khan said that he had sacrificed PTI governments in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Punjab because the country needed clean and transparent elections. Why are you trying to stop my voice? क्यों वो पुलिस ये फौज चौधरी को क्यों पकड़ा है? कौन सा जुर्म किया इसने कोई मुझे जमहूरियत में बताए कि ये जुर्म होता है कि जो उसने उसको मुंशी कह दिया उसको चीफ इलेक्शन कमीशन कभी इसके ऊपर भी किसी जमहूरियत में पकड़ा जाता है A Pakistani court on Wednesday evening approved two day physical remand of Fawad Chaudhry speaking to reporters Fawad said he was not afraid of the case but was proud of it he said a frivolous case has been registered against him like it was done to Nelson Mandela meanwhile information minister Maryam Aurangzeb said that the coalition government had no hand in Chaudhry's arrest she said that if they want to arrest their political opponents then the entire top tier pti leadership would have been behind bars so it is not politically motivated moving on government employees of inland revenue department in pakistan administered kashmir recently staged a demonstration to demand a hike in their salaries at par with their counterparts in pakistan the protesters accused the pakistan establishment of being apathetic towards their plight Employees of the Department of Inland Revenue in Pakistan administered Kashmir recently staged a protest to demand a hike in their salaries at par with their counterparts in Pakistan as they blamed the government of being apathetic towards their plight. The protesting employees said there has been no increment or departmental promotion for the past 15 years. Since 2009 there has been no new recruitment as well, leaving them overburdened with no regard for their services. फिर हमें जो वहाँ पे माली मुफाद मिल रहे थे जिसमें खासकर हायरिंग है परफॉर्मेंस लाउंस है और बच्चों के वजायफ मिलते थे फिर कर्जा जात की मद में पैसे मिला करते थे वो सब मराद तकरीबन ख़त्म हो चुकी हुई हैं बंद हो चुकी हैं अपनी जगह जहाँ वो स्टक हो चुकी हैं तो हमारा यही मुतालबा है उनको जैसा कि पाकिस्तान में जब रूल जो पाकिस्तान से हमने अडॉप्ट किए हैं उन रूल के तहत जो पाकिस्तान अजाफे लगा रहे हैं तो वो अजाफे हमें भी दिए जाएँ इसके अलावा पंद्रह साल से दो से लेकर अभी तक मुलाजमन की जो डी पी सी है वो नहीं हुई है जो बंदा दो हज़ार सात में जिस स्केल में काम कर रहा था वो आज भी उसी स्केल में काम कर रहा है और इसके अलावा हमारे जो अपग्रेडेशन की चंद पोस्टें थी जिनका फ़ौर नोटिफाई होना था जो अपग्रेड हुई थी पोस्टें तो वो भी अभी तक हमें नोटिफिकेशन नहीं मिला है दिस इज़ नॉट समथिंग न्यू एज लोकल्स एंड गवर्नमेंट वर्कर्स हैव टू ऑफन फेस डिस्क्रिमिनेशन एट दी हैंड्स ऑफ द स्टूज अथॉरिटीज इन द इलीगली ऑक्यूपाइड रीजन The protesters said it is indeed appalling that people who have served for several years for the government have still not been given equal rights. The UN aid chief Martin Griffith said on Wednesday that 6 million people are knocking on famine doors of Afghanistan witnesses the coldest winter in 15 years with temperatures dropping up to minus 34 degrees Celsius in some areas. The cold weather has also deepened the economic crisis that Afghanistan is facing amid a slowdown in aid due to Taliban's policies.
The UNA chief Martin Griffiths said on Wednesday that 6 million people were knocking on Fameen's door during Afghanistan's coldest winter in 15 years. According to officials of Afghanistan's interim Taliban government, more than 150 people have died during the country's worst winter in more than a decade. Griffiths said that the Afghan winter makes everything a lot more difficult and they are very conscious of the season and the timing and some of the consequences of loss of life. He also urged the Taliban to allow women to work for NGOs to provide aid. Many aid groups have partially suspended operations in recent weeks due to a Taliban ruling stating that most female NGO workers could not work, leaving agencies unable to operate many programs in the conservative country. So the Afghan winter makes everything a lot more difficult and we're very conscious of the 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 season and the timing and as you say we see some of the consequences in loss of life. This is within a context of 6 million people it's an astonishing number of people knocking on famine's door in famine like conditions 6 million people it's 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 unparalleled as far as i know meanwhile residents of an ice and snow covered kabul town on wednesday expressed their concerns about the severe cold weather that has gripped much of afghanistan and killed numerous people hasta <laughs> fiso bas taraf بعد از طرف شام که هست هوا خیلی سرد است یک تیتر شاگردی ما زیادش نمی آید بخاطر هوا سرد است بیتر یک کلیه داشت می آید با کلانهش خوردهش نمی آید بخاطر که هوا سرد است ما امکانات نداریم در اینجا گاز نداریم بخاری نداریم امکانات نیست بخاطر دیگه قدرش دیگه که نمی توان به درست های شد With temperatures dropping to minus 34 degrees Celsius in some areas the cold weather has deepened the economic crisis that Afghanistan is facing Griffith said that UN would continue operating wherever it could but there was a concern that the international donors might not want to commit to the huge financial cost of aid at around 4.6 billion US dollars a year. Exim offered Sri Lanka a two-year moratorium on its debt and said it would support the country's efforts to secure a 2.9 billion dollars loan from the International Monetary Fund. The bailout hinges on financing assurances from bilateral creditors, regional rivals China and India are the biggest lenders to crisis hit Sri Lanka. China feels for Sri Lanka as it faces difficulties and challenges and has been helping with Sri Lanka's socio-economic development as best as we can. The foreign ministry said in comments to Reuters news agency. This comes a week after India said it has written to the IMF saying it would commit to supporting Sri Lanka with financing and debt relief. At the end of 2020, China's Exim loaned Sri Lanka 2.83 billion dollars, which is 3.5% of the island's debt, according to an IMF report released in March last year. And a two-day orange festival in India's northeastern Nagaland state this week witnessed an overwhelming response. The event was conceptualized to recognize and celebrate the hard work of the orange growers while facilitating market linkages for them to sell their produce at one hub. The third edition of the annual Orange Festival in Kohima district of India's northeastern Nagaland state this week witnessed an overwhelming response. The two-day event which concluded on Wednesday in Kohima's Rusomo village was conceptualized to recognize and celebrate the hard work of the orange growers while facilitating market linkages for them to sell their produce at one hub. It also showcased the potential of the region's farming sector. Several stalls of oranges, their saplings and other organic vegetables and fruits were put up. The festival marked the harvest of organic oranges in the district. The event also featured local handicrafts and indigenously used kitchen items. At present there are about 35,000 standing trees of orange plantation in Rusoma village. Around 70 hectares of land owned by 50 families are being used for the cultivation of organic oranges. India's northeastern region is known for its fertile soil and favorable climate, producing a range of fruits and vegetables as well as other crops such as tea. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.